Hi, I'm Steve Miller, call me Slim, and this is the Slim Market Week. It's a look back at what happened in the financial markets in the past week, and a look forward at what might happen in coming weeks, and hopefully lots of great ideas and opportunities for you throughout the show. Well, the stock market had its biggest downside reversal in a very long time on Monday, as that set up a very choppy week. But that was seemingly saved by positive seasonality on this holiday week. That is, till Friday. Uh, it was Powell's reappointment as Fed chair that started the week off with a big gain. And the investors thought, well, it'd be more of the same. Powell in place, a huge upside over the last few years, and the stocks were going to be in good shape. But with Powell now, you know, no longer concerned about his employment, the inflation fight can commence. And that uh, big rally that we saw did reverse. It opened early Monday to the upside, but rates were flying on the upside, and the dollar was screaming, and gold and silver were moving down quickly. And stocks, uh, well, they reversed as investors caught on, and the celebration ended. Uh, a nearly 50-point gain early on Monday turned into a 20-point loss, uh, and that left a lot of important reversal patterns on many key stocks, which I'm going to show you in just a few minutes. Tuesday, stocks followed through on the downside as retail cratered on earnings. Uh, as supply chain issues and inflation cut into margins, Best Buy was down 16%, Abercrombie down about 12%, Urban down 11%, in a very weak retail group. The market did get saved that day also on energy as, you know, Biden, uh, he released the uh, SPR, made a deal uh, with a lot of countries, and it was a, a total joke, and oil went up uh, very uh, significantly on that day. And the oil stocks rebounded, uh, and the market uh, recovered. Well, that was till Friday. Wednesday again saw retail set an early very negative tone. Nordstrom down 28%, Gap stores down 22%. And uh, earnings came out on these, you know, they look like they beat, but margins, margins were really poor and guidance was lower. So uh, the uh, retail sector, which people bought like crazy to just ridiculous levels, well, those investors are learning stocks don't only just go up. Uh, with uh, the S&P 500 um, down uh, about 30 points on Wednesday, uh, investors realized, well, it's Thanksgiving. So you might as well just buy them because Friday is probably going to be up. It's in a huge percentage upside day. Uh, so the market closed on the firm side. Also, FOMC minutes had come out. And members, well, they wanted a faster taper. And they wanted faster uh, upside uh, rates. Uh, uh, and that, uh, of course, changed on Friday. Uh, if it wasn't Thanksgiving, the market really would have been down based on everything that was going on in the market. Thursday, of course, we were off for Thanksgiving, and most investors were not feeling that thankful as they finished their dinner and got a load of what was going on in the market overnight. Worldwide markets, well, they got hit very, very hard on the discovery of a new C-19, COVID-19 variant. There's less than 100 cases in South Africa, but there are uh, many things about this that has uh, the, uh, the doctors, the professionals, all very concerned. And several countries are slamming the doors on air travel out of South Africa. So uh, there is a lot of fear going on right now in the market. Uh, it's really uh, was uh, uh, kind of right in your face and really rude for Goldman Sachs, who had come out and uh, just uh, on earlier that day had come out with a piece that said, 
uh, that the Fed should um, double the pace of the taper and should increase rates much faster, calling for three rate, rate increases in 2022. Then, of course, came Friday, and things have changed. Um, the, uh, uh, the market overnight uh, really got slammed. And now, as I'm doing this show here on Friday, uh, uh, around with only about an hour left before the markets have their early close, the S&P 500 is down 100 points. So it was certainly a very, very strong downside. And overnight, S&Ps were down about that much. So market has really not been able to move to the upside very much. And we have been talking about the fact that, you know, the market was due for some significant move to the downside late November into December. Uh, and, uh, you know, all of this news about the COVID coming out, uh, that uh, in this new new variant, they likely are going to call new uh, and you. The uh, the market was really just susceptible to this. So while they're blaming it on COVID nineteen, um, I'm I'm here to tell you I think if that is not the real reason for this decline, it might have been the trigger and the time was right for it. But what really happens in Decembers? That's really the question. And we want to look at that as we switch over and look at this slide. Let's look at the month by month uh, uh, over the last, well, back since 1928. This, uh, these are the returns in the stock market for each month uh, since 1928. And you can see in here that, well, it's basically the market goes up. You can see more than it goes down. And this right over here is uh, December. December, as you can see, is uh, when you when you look at this time period, uh, it it really had the best ratio of ups to downs. Uh, Sixty eight years were up in December, twenty five years were down, so that uh, shows you a lot of strength normally in December. And you can see in here by the average percentage gain each month that December is actually the third best of the year, with July the best. April, the second best, as you can see. And of course, the worst for the year, uh, a month of the year is often here in September. So uh, this picture that you get in here is a picture of the likelihood, based on averages, of December being an out month. However, we have been looking for a top here in November and a move down in the markets into uh, the uh, at least the mid-December period. And now this decline really looks like that has started it. Uh, this uh, weakness that we're, we see here, um, the short-term patterns that we look at in the NASDAQ and the S&P 500 and the Russell, they are breaking down right now. And these breakdowns are warnings. So we had talked about about four and a half to 6% move to the downside uh, in between sometime in November and December. And it certainly looks like that is here. We'll look for the S&P 500 to get down to somewhere around 4,500 before the Christmas rally ensues. For the week, uh, the major index is down about 2% right now. The Russell's down about 4%. The uh, bond market, well, the bond market had a very choppy week. Now, it's up huge here on uh, Friday. Uh, with the uh, 30 years up uh, over two points to the upside, getting closer to three right now. Still, it's a downside week of somewhat under a point uh, as uh, the bond market was very weak early on. And yields uh, right now are uh, four on, fri on Friday, the 10-year yields are down 14 basis points. That is incredible, down to about 1.50 uh, on the 10-year yields. So that is a, uh, a really uh, strange week that we've had with all this volatility in the bond market. But still, with that big drop in yields, it's still down about a basis point on the week. So you can see what kind of volatility that we had. The rally today is all about an in-your-face Goldman Sachs uh, that the Fed, you know, which uh, was aggressively now talking about uh, changing their, their, their stance uh, based on inflation and 
talking about them wanting on the minutes they want to they wanted to speed up the whole process and now there's all this talk that the fed may be on even on hold right now uh, and uh, hold back on the taper i actually don't think that's true i think they're going to stick to their plan right now their plan is uh, uh, that between now and uh, the middle of next year they're going to reduce the taper to zero they're going to taper down to zero uh, and that uh, then they're going to start looking at raising rates. And I think that that's still going to be what's happening. Gold market, gold tried to rally very strongly here on Friday, but then pulled back a lot. It's still down some $45 on the week. Uh, on this big up, to up day that it had on Friday, well, the sellers are still there, as you can see the pullback. Silver down about a dollar and a quarter on the week, and that's a huge move. And that, of course, was based on uh, interest rates and the Fed. The, the metals market is very uh, correlated to the interest rate market right now, if you're a follower of that. The dollar uh, up small. I think it peaked for now. I told my members about that during the week. Uh, and uh, the dollar, though it had a small gain for the week, was up a lot more. But here on Friday, it's down about six tenths of a percent. Actually, now about eight tenths of a percent. Is, uh, it is accelerating its decline to the downside. So we pretty much nailed that uh, move in, in the dollar and also nailed the top. Oil um, got crushed here on Friday. Uh, when you look at the travel stocks and you look at the the, the probabilities of, of uh, travel being shut down uh, oil's down 11 percent right now on the day that's almost nine dollars trading under seventy dollars so uh, again we had caught the top in that one beautifully and i really encourage you to uh, become a member if you're not and watch our future speak shows uh, that's on Wednesday where I do really deep analysis on 26 different contracts and indexes. Uh, and uh, there's just a ton of information in there of great value. So I do weekly and daily. So in about one hour and 15 minutes, I go through 52 different charts and do a tremendous amount of teaching around our style of analysis, that which our four analysts here at AskSlim.com uh, do uh, very extensively. Coming up in this show, well, we're going to look at 10 stocks warning that there are peaks and that December could be a much tougher month than what it is on average. Then I'm going to look at the S&P 500, give you my intermediate view uh, and some a great picture uh, of what our chart streams looks like. And you'll see the S&P 500 on multiple time frames. So do uh, make sure that you watch that. Uh, and I think that uh, you will really enjoy that part of this show. Uh, please do go to AskSlim.com and take a look at our site. Uh, you can become a free member or you can take advantage of the special I'm going to show you right now, Give the Gift of Ask Slim, which is absolutely the best prices of the year. If you're on YouTube, please do subscribe to the channel, click that notification bell, uh, and like this video. Give us a thumbs up, that does help us. And if you're on Twitter, follow us at Ask Slim. Uh, if you want information about uh, our memberships, our content, tons of things that we put out all of the time in our five different membership levels, uh, please do write at matt at AskSlim.com. We have something for everybody at AskSlim.com. All right, I'm going to look at 10 stocks that say December may be a tough month for the stock market. So we have been looking for a peak in November and a decline into mid-December and then probably a rally, some kind of a rally into the Christmas time. So we talked about that being a potential bungee jump and you could see the bungee jump starting here uh, on uh, Friday the 26th, the day after Thanksgiving with a really, really big down day in the stock market. So this was actually set up by the leader stocks uh, and uh, we had warnings about that, and I'm going to show you those. Uh, the, the strongest uh, sector, the one that really hadn't turned down yet, uh, was the sector of uh, XLK, uh, which are the tech stocks. And that those stocks have just held the market up while there's been a significant <clears throat> deterioration underneath the surface. Breath figures really bad, a lot of groups doing very poorly, but the index is holding up and actually making a new high early part of this week. Um, it was disguising a lot of problems. And now I think the mask is off. 
and I think you're going to be able to see these, I'll show you 10 symbols that I think are really warning. Uh, many of these stocks uh, in this category ha have these have candlestick reversals. And if you have learned how to use candlestick patterns, you will be able to see the um, quality of the information uh, that you get out of them. If not, uh, I did a video back about five years ago where I talk about the psychology behind each of these candlesticks. And that's available in our 500 video library uh, for level members in level two, three, and four. So what we're looking at here are stocks that most of them were overbought and, and had what we call an overbought climax as they moved up very sharply and then reversed. Now most of these, because they've just come off a top, still have positive momentum conditions. So I would expect that they would have some complexity to the top as the momentum conditions weaken. Let's take a look here as we look at the XLK chart right here. So I'll just show you what I'm talking about. This is the 89 day moving average. Many people use the 50. Um, I don't use the 50, I don't use the 20. I just think those are uh, too commonly used and a lot of testing I did uh, shows other moving averages that are better. And of course, this is the slim ribbon. That's made up of three exponential moving averages, an eight, a 13, and a 21. And on the bottom here is the slim ribbon PO. The slim ribbon PO is the signal indicator for the slim ribbon. I want you to see everything that's on this chart. I want you to look way back over here in September where uh, it got very far away, the price got very far away from that 89 day moving average. And then there was an engulfing pattern right here. Uh, it's an outside day. It opens higher and then closes lower than the previous bar, as you see right there. And that normally sets up a downtrend. Now, I would say it probably has some 70% accuracy. Of course, there are sometimes it reverses right back up, and that's pretty easy to see when it does it. In this case, it did not, and it fell for about a month after that. Now, look at right over here, which happened this week. That big opening that we had on Monday of this week <clears throat> on news of Powell's reappointment uh, and then had that big reversal. And now you can see has continued to the downside. So this is XLK. This is the Spider Select uh, and uh, is the technology sector. And it is now moving down. You see getting down to that 21 bar moving average there and the slim ribbon is still green as you can see there so the momentum is still holding but beginning to roll over in here so this is the first sign this big engulfing right over there and that big reversal that these tech stocks have problems and that the stocks that have led the way on the upside and have disguised a breakdown under the market of many many groups uh, now are starting to show problems. Take a look now, I'm gonna show you nine more as we look at Tesla, T-S-L-A, and you can see in there, Tesla, well, it made its peak with an island. Those two little, what they call spinning tops after a gap, and then the gap down, and then it tried to get back, as you could see, and then made the evening star on that reversal day earlier in the week. This is a significant top, and we believe Tesla is going much lower. Now, this 89 day moving average is often a magnet, and that is somewhere down over here, maybe about 870 to 900 as, it be, as it's moving up. So we think that is reasonable to see somewhere around over coming weeks, a move to the downside that might be as much as a couple hundred points. So Tesla looks like it peaked to us. Netflix actually got a bid today because the stay at home stock started to get a bid. Uh, but uh, as you can see in here, there are multiple patterns. This is a double top. This is an evening star. There's your engulfing in the beginning of the week. It tried to open higher because the st uh, cause of the COVID variant, uh, thinking that, well, the stay-at-home stocks would do well again. Uh, it's still slightly up on the day. But in this case, you see where the slim ribbon was positive through this whole period here. And these bullish signals, as you can see, with upside momentum resumptions, all of a sudden began to waver and is now neutral. So a stock that was an upside driver in the market is far away from that moving average, likely to get down somewhere uh, under the 600 level and uh, a top really looking like it's in place. 
AVGO is the next one we're going to look at. And we know the semiconductors, this is Broadcom, has been, have been tr tremendously strong. Again, you could see what happened here when the momentum turned green. The slim membrane went positive and it exploded to the upside as it continued to widen. Here it began to roll over. It's still positive, however, it's about to give that up. Here's your engulfing pattern that you see right there, and that is the top. And you can see this upside climax where it gets way, way far from this 89-day moving average and now begins to move down. Pretty reasonable to see this move down uh, under the 510 area uh, based on where that moving average is. Another one in the category NVIDIA really looks to me like it's a, a, another beautiful engulfing pattern right there. Again, you will see the long distance got away from that m moving average. Still momentum remains positive. It's barely began to roll over right now. So it's uh, for, for the bears, it has some work to do, but that really does look like a top in place. Facebook is the next one. Now, Facebook already had a big breakdown. The company's got lots and lots of issues. We've seen that as it moved down from 384 down to about 308 and then moved up. Now this really looks like a bear flag to me. Here's your engulfing pattern right there. You can see this one actually came back up and tagged the 89 day moving average. In fact, it got very far away from it over here. Momentum was negative as you could see the slim ribbon warning you it was gonna continue to go down. Then it neutralized and got positive, but really weak. And uh, this right over here really looks like that when it got oversold and then rebounded, it's done with that and moving down again. I could easily see the stock back down near 300 relatively soon. That's a look at Facebook. Microsoft, um, Microsoft of course has been an absolute monster uh, as it uh, also moved significantly away from the moving average. See what it did over here, way far, far away from it, came back right down to it far away from it right here the climax this big buying right here on that opening the reversal as you see and continuing to move down and the momentum beginning to weaken in microsoft another indication that the stocks that have held it all together are starting to struggle here is apple now this is really interesting apple has that nearly uh, a gravestone doji right there that big shooting star uh, and that is a real warning as it got very far away from the moving average. We'll call that a buying climax where it moved up here very quickly, uh, about $18 and then reversed and now is beginning to move down again. Realistically, it could be, get you down to about 150 here in the near term. You see, these are declines. They're not massive declines, but they're enough to be negatively affecting the market moving forward here. Amazon is another stock that well, the stay-at-home buying came in this morning uh, and then reversed uh, sharply to the downside. Uh, the uh, evening star in here, this is a big one, as you can see, as it moved far away from that moving average and now moving back down to it, realistically should be under 3,400 uh, fairly soon uh, as it uh, moves back down to that 89-day moving average. So that's a look at Amazon. And the last one we'll look at here is applied materials, which is in the semiconductor material category, uh, which has been a big upside leader. In this case, it was earnings that came out right over here, where it got far away from the moving average, and then gave you what's called a kicker pattern. Closes up near the high, gaps to the downside. These tend to not be recoverable and then they move to the downside. You can see all of this positive reading right in here, right in here, and then has just neutralized here today and probably will go negative. That's a reasonable target down here about 138, which isn't very far, four or five points uh, on the downside here, and of course, could get worse. Those are the 10 stocks, very representative of the stocks that have held together the stock market for all of these many months and years. Uh, that now are giving at least short-term warnings of tops. And this market decline, which is accelerating here on Friday to the downside, uh, really does look like to me that it will uh, continue into sometime into December. Were we to get some rallies back because everybody thinks you've got to buy the dip, um, I really believe that these are candidates to look for for short-side trades.
for against aggressive traders. Of course, we never do give you advice. We simply share our education with you, and hopefully you found that to be extremely valuable. So that is a look at the 10 leader stocks that say December may be a tough month for the stock market. All right, I'm going to show you here very quickly our annual Ask Slim Holiday Special. Give the gift of Ask Slim. We have special rates right now. The rates are never lower than they are right now. Three-month memberships are now, if you give the gift, non-recurring. So in other words, you give it to somebody, you don't have to worry about getting charged again. You don't have to worry about them getting charged again. They get to really see what we do for three months, decide on their own if they like it. So you can give the gift to someone you know who loves trading or investing, or give the gift to yourself. It's great for first-time members at Ask Slim, and, and use this special to try a higher level membership uh, for, uh, you know, maybe go up to level three if you're a level two or level one member. And uh, for, for doing that, for giving this gift, we're going to give you a gift. This bonus gift to you is an Amazon gift card. So you're going to give the gift to somebody, we're going to give you a gift right back, at, depending on what level you purchase as you give this gift, the gift of Ask Slim. Uh, if you want to do that, go to the Ask Slim front page. And I'm going to take you there right now so that you can see the front page at AskSlim.com. And what I want you to do is look for this top, save 30% or more on our annual gift holiday specials, and then click on that. And it's going to take you to the page with the whole description of what we're doing uh, as we um, give you back a gift of an Amazon gift card. And everything in here is listed about what's included in each of these memberships. There's just a tremendous, tremendous amount of content in here. Le level two uh, includes our stock index report, our entire library of, of videos. You get our live uh, grid uh, that shows you the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ and the Russell on 15 minute charts. Uh, the, just I'm not going to read them all to you, but there's just so much content if you give that gift. And of course, if you give a <coughs> gift, gift option number one, which is level two, we're going to send you back a $20 gift card. Not a very expensive option here. If you, if you give the gift of level um, uh, three, we're going to send you a $50 gift card. Give the gift of level four, and we're going to send you a $100 gift card. And give the gift of level four plus, uh, level 4 and Level 4 Plus have our uh, charts that we do all our work on on Thinkorswim. Uh, and uh, a Level 4 Plus will uh, give you the ability to ask us questions and make requests for custom chart work on two symbols a week. So uh, we give you uh, tremendous hands-on uh, support. Uh, if you become a level four plus member that's limited now to only i think 17 slots that are left in there so uh you might consider level four uh for yourself or for somebody else that's give the gift of ass slim and uh this is our holiday special and the lowest prices of the year for non-recurring memberships just absolutely fantastic all right so let's uh take a look here as we move on to our stock market review, the S&P 500, as we look at the weekly analysis. And we're going to look at the multiple time frame indicators uh, also, uh, and we'll look at the um, uh, our chart streams, which is just amazing. Let's take a look here as we uh, switch over, and I'm going to go to the, I'm sorry, SPY uh, on a weekly chart, and that's where we're going to do our analysis today right in here. So this is uh, cycle analysis for those of you that are new. On the bottom are our, char our cycle brackets and each of these cycles that you can see right over here, bottom right in the trough and often where there is a where there are multiple cycles coming down. So you can see an extremely strong situation in here. We had minor cycle, two minor cycles, and one dominant cycle trading upward. You can see that. There's one, two, three, four cycles that have traded upward here since that low back in March of 20 when COVID hit. That pandemic decline, you can see right over there. And each of these yellow areas right over there are where the nesting is and likely to get 
market declines. Our analysis has showed that sometime in November and into December, the market would again be in another one of those declining periods. Let me just grab this a little closer in here so you can see it. So what we had anticipated was in this yellow zone that these two cycles coming down were going to bring the market to the downside. We thought it would be 45 to 6%, potentially up to 25 points uh, on the SPY, 250 points on the S&P 500. And right now, well, we're making that ground up very quickly. As you can see in here as this week closes, this happens to be a double star, evening star. And uh, if you want to learn more about candlesticks, um, watch the segment that I did on the 10 leader stocks that are showing market tops uh, earlier in this show. So our target over here, as you can see, is somewhere down around 450 or something like that. And it's coming down very quickly. The next support down over here is somewhere around 446 and then somewhere around 439. If this market wants to accelerate on the downside, we believe over the next few weeks that it could do that and get even bigger declines than the 6% that we had anticipated, 45 to 6%. So that low is due somewhere right in this time frame, as you can see. And then coming into late part of the year, that Christmas rally potential, and sometime into the early part of next year. We believe that there will be a complex bull market peak that is completed in here. Uh, and that it will then begin a very bad period in 2022 that uh, we'll see a bear market. We have talked about that, but that's kind of bigger picture. And right now we really want to focus on these weeks right in here that looks like coming down in here until sometime around mid-December and then beginning to, the mo to move uh, to the upside again with what we think will be a rebound that can set a pretty significant top in there. So that is a look at SPY. It's following our pattern exactly. Now, the changes, there are some changes in the conditions of the market. The S&P 500 conditions for the intermediate term. The momentum is still positive. This is the momentum indicator right that you see right over there. That is our reversal scout on the weekly chart. Uh, uh, but the pattern in the uh, the uh, the cycle pattern, which is still positive, as you could see the formation, has now moved into its declining phase right in here, and that's confirmed by the daily chart having broken down. The uh, momentum here, uh, the short term, as you can see, has been downgraded, and uh, that uh, momentum is failing and beginning to roll over, and uh, the cycle pattern because of the breakdown is negative. And that phase, the declining phase, has its next trough, December 5th to 11th. So that means that this decline that began right over here <coughs> on the intermediate chart really does point out in here into around the second week of December to make a low of this move and then beginning to move up again. There is a risk in the market, as you can see, as the market moves down very sharply, while this will be blamed on the COVID variant, it is a market that was susceptible to downside movement as it failed in this wall of resistance that you see there on those FIB extension confluences and then began to move down. So the picture in here is for probably another two weeks, a pretty good downside risk, maybe three, and then uh, a move back up towards the end of the year. Uh, for the intermediate term. Now, I want to look at uh, our chart streams. Uh, I'm going here, that's give the gift, and we're just going to switch over to uh, the chart streams page, as you can see. These are our live broadcasts of our, of our work. I prepare our proprietary indicators. The SIR daily right over here is for level two members and up, which is short-term trading, 15-minute uh, charts, live charts with our indicators on it, on the S&P 500 and the, the uh, NASDAQ and the Russell. These are multi-time frame charts uh, that have four different time frames on them with our proprietary indicators on them. I'm gonna go uh, in here to look at the S&P 500 SPX for you to see. And uh, this has our, uh, I'm gonna click the arrow and you could do that also if you're a level um, uh, 
three or four or four plus member, and you get our multi time frame analysis. So this is the weekly chart. Momentum is still positive, and that makes sense. If you look on this chart right over here, you could see our reversal scout rolling over. That is a negative occurrence. This is a breakdown right in here underneath that cycle low, a negative occurrence. So this is the weekly and the daily, and you can see that the um, uh, momentum condition is just getting that signal of rolling over right now in line with what I believe is going to happen over these next few weeks. This is our two hour chart and the two hour chart actually rolled over here and gave you a great signal came up and hit the resistance and then plunge. That was absolutely beautiful and the slim ribbon PO going negative right now which tells you rallies need to be sold. Here's your 15 minute chart which is on the SIR um, a daily chart stream uh, that I wanted to illustrate. Those yellow zones are the uh, areas of acceleration. So when they get into there, it's likely it's going to keep going and accelerate as you saw that happen. Uh, and uh, Slim Ribbon PO is negative and the Reversal Scout turned negative right over here. And you could see that was just perfect as it has continued to move to the downside. Uh, in the uh, SIR um, daily uh, streams, where you get all three, you'll be able to compare the S&P 500, NASDAQ, and the Russell. So you can see in here what's happened is that the, t t the deterioration was clear, the breakdown is clear uh, on these multiple time frames, uh, and it's uh, to me very clear that if a market, if the market does try to rally back, it is going to run into a lot of trouble. This coincides with what I shared earlier uh, where I looked at the 10 stocks that are um, giving warnings, the, the leaders in the market that are giving warnings that the market has peaked and there's going to be further declines. So uh, cycle patterns here, very clear. Conditions changing, more negative, very clear, and likely to see declines in the stock market over the next several weeks. We believe sell the rallies. That's where we are right now. That's a look at the S&P 500 plus our proprietary chart streams with all of our indicators on there. Please do remember to give that gift to Vast Slim uh, and uh, you can uh, go and watch that special that we have uh, here on uh, this show and you'll be able to see what, uh, what that means. Uh, great opportunity to get all of our uh, content, uh, the amazing things that we put out. Go to AskSlim.com and explore, become a free member for sure. And uh, if you're on your YouTube, subscribe to the channel, click that notification bell, like this video, give us a thumbs up, and uh, watch uh, our member videos in the playlists, and you'll get a lot of idea of what we do offer. On Twitter, follow us at AskSlim, and for all, all your questions on our memberships, our huge offerings of education and analysis, and our special Give the Gift, write to matt at askslim.com. That's everything I have for you today. I hope you found it absolutely illuminating. And uh, I want you to be so careful because it is so crazy out there. I'm always wishing you great trading.